Hi, everybody. Those of you who can join us today anyway, I got a couple of messages from a couple of people that said they weren't feeling very stable to join in. Someone else is on travel. There was another person who has lost their internet connection. And then uh, a couple of our other friends are um, international, so the time doesn't work out for them. So let's get started. Um, so the topics for today, uh, just quickly. Um, okay, come on. There we go. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit more about the 13 zodiac constellations, um, the influx of bio photons we received last month on 424. And I definitely felt like these huge waves on that day coming in, uh, revisiting dark matter a little bit and trying to, you know, because that's a hard concept to kind of wrap your mind around. So, you know, I kind of keep bringing it up and maybe in different words and different uh, ways to kind of start grappling with that concept. Um, the quantum field versus the quantum field, enough pulses of sound breaths, uh, new creation technology or tools uh, to continue to stream through. We got some new images from the galactic suns or the primordial galactic suns to help us um, utilize these, these new energies that are coming through. Um, so med the meditation is going to focus on connecting to the energetic earth channels as the earth is clearing and upgrading. So uh, we'll talk a bit about that and hopefully that will help people start to feel um, more clearings going on in the body. Okay, uh, let's see, next. So the 13 zodiac signs, I don't know if anybody did it, um, that meditation, again, it's, it's new, it's something new. And I felt like that was something that I needed to do for Sam in order for her to get comfortable in her body. Um, so, the uh, at, at the constellations, you know, they're stars, so they're like emanations, and they're emanating from source, uh, and they each have a different element. And what's been missing in uh, the elements? We've only been talking about the four elements, right? Earth, air, water, and fire. Uh, but there is a fifth element, ether, and Ophicus is that fifth element. And um, when we've been operating with just the four, it's almost like the polarity, uh, the polarity dance has been, you know, we've continued to um, uh, dance in this polarity. And so always trying to get balance. And it's that fifth element of ether that brings a sense of neutrality and stability. And the zodiacs are also uh, 13 constellations are also, and, and the elements that they emanate through are what uh, play a big role in my understanding in activating our DNA. So um, uh, that's why some people may be more like a, have earth uh, elements in their a activation of their physical body or other people might be more um, water. Other, some other people might be more um, fire, you know, so the different combinations and the way uh, the elements activate our DNA uh, helps to really manifest our body. Um, so I just wanted to give you a couple of references as well, if anybody wants to look a little bit deeper. I first had learned about this through the Energetic Synthesis newsletter in March, 2014. And I'll put the links in, you know, when, the, when we get the description uh, of the uh, recording up. Um, and then I also got this book a couple of years ago astrology of the 13 signs of the zodiac and this guy is a uh, I think he's an astrophysicist and he uh, talks about the history of how we came to the 12 zodiac system how we came to use that and it's based on the the mapping of um, Ptolemy p-t-o-l-e-m-y of the stars and that was like 2,000 years ago you know so we've been using that uh, reference point that he came up with, um, if I'm saying this correctly, I hope. Um, but, you know, the earth has a wobble and we're constantly moving, you know, we're moving around the center of the galaxy, we're rotating around the sun. And so, you know, those um, alignments are shifting to the constellations are constantly shifting. So he was saying that uh, the 12 tropical system of the zodiac signs are really off now you know um so like this weekend everybody was saying that this was a full moon in scorpio and 
I looked at it and for some reason I felt like, no, it's in Ophicus. This uh, full moon was in Ophicus. Um, if you look at the chart, like a 13 zodiac sign chart, Ophicus, um, Scorpio and Ophicus are like right next to each other and they're small windows, you know? So in the 13 zodiac sign system, the signs don't go through the, um, we don't go through each sign like that organized where it's divided into 60 minutes divided into 12. Um, there are certain signs that we actually move through, you know, it takes longer to move through some of those signs. So like, like cancer is a lot longer than, um, what is it? April, I mean, I can't, can't remember the dates, but it's not, it's more than like that, that one month window. So there's a couple of people that have some posted in the chat. Let me see. Um, oh yeah, somebody else talking about antimatter. Uh, yeah, Melina says she thinks she's, um, yeah, Scorpio. Yeah, you just have to try the chart. And, and again, uh, you know, do the, um, you can try that meditation that I put in when you feel like you're ready. And I put in some instructions um, about how you can go about doing it. And, and again, just do it if it feels right for you. Um, you know, I won't say like what I experienced um, when I did it because it was like a big change for me. Um, and uh, I'm, I'm, you know, feeling some changes going on with um, with my family, but you know, I don't wanna like taint, I don't wanna, um, I don't, I think it's better for me not to say what what those changes are until, until you do it and you can experience yourself, you know, if it feels right for you. Um, about that. But anyway, I just wanted to put up some more references um, about the uh, 13, about the 13 signs, and I'm not just making this up, you know, kind of thing. So, um, okay, so let's see the next one. Uh, yeah, the biophoton influx, um, you know, biophotons, meaning that it's biologically available uh, to use. And so I uh, kind of put out the question. So, well, receiving these biophotons, we can feel ourselves moving through it, uh, through these, um, feeling these waves that are coming from the galactic core. And, uh, you know, and then our sun magnifies it by uh, emanating it to us. You know, when we feel things, but um, is that alone bioavailable? Like just by receiving directly those, um, those photons. And uh, what I got was that, it's, it's really through the earth. The earth transduces that energy to become bioavailable to us. So it's really important to uh, now keep connecting with the earth. Uh, the earth you know, has been, was in, you know, what we call a fallen matrix, a false matrix that was um, in extreme polarity and a lot of reversal codes coming in that um, which means that you would ascend to a certain point and then there would be this current that would come in and, and basically knock us back down and not realizing that we were recycling the same uh, themes over and over again. You know, just like what you're we're seeing playing out in the outer world where they're trying to play out a, a theme of war again, you know, warring against each other, warring for, for resources, making somebody the enemy all those kinds of things. Those are those are the kind of the themes that have been going on for a long time, and we have to transcend and be get beyond that in order to break um, our engagement with this false matrix, which is coming down. Um, you know, with all these activations now, it it can't survive what you know what it's undergoing. But uh, just like with its grace in action, meaning that it's not all taken down at once because we would have a difficult time then surviving uh, that, that level of change. And so, you know, we're grad we've been gradually, kind of gradually, you know, moving through these different phases and stages. But again, this year is the one that is really marking the, um, the co-creation with a lot of the new um, activations, templates, I don't know what you call it, codes, that are all coming in now. So, um, so you know, this is why we're gonna, the meditation, we're gonna be connecting to the earth and the new earth channel or the energy uh, in the earth. 
and we'll be talking about that some more and how to how to keep up with that. So, um, you know, I've talked about this dragon, dark, dark matter dragon, uh, Katya, before. And, uh, you know, I've been working with Katya since 2017. So I went back and looked at the planetary synthesis from 2017 when Sammy told me we have to do this, you know, for six months every month and meet. And I was like, I don't know what I'm doing here. But, um, you know, that and she was talking about then, you know, this is not space that kind of had burst open. Um, they opened this portal uh, into this, all I can say is now, I think the 16th, 17th and 18th dimensions. And uh, I was feeling this uh, dragon named Katya uh, of the dark matter realm. So I was even writing them, there is not space, um, the new alpha and omega, you know, I mean, there was all these things uh, go going on even then I didn't know. And now I'm st it's starting to make more sense to me what uh, all that was about and what's going on. So now, you know, um, in May, 2022, um, you know, I had tried to draw Katya before and I only could get like this rough shadowy sketch of Katya. And then um, maybe about three weeks ago, Sam had one of those really just violent outbursts again, you know? And so um, our in-home helper was here and, you know, I was toning and, Tony, light language and all these things. And then all of a sudden I just felt this dragon like this, um, just looking me in the eyes. Uh, and I was like, there she is, that's Katya now. So that indicated to me that um, it broke through whatever layers uh, of um, interface that we have with dark matter. I'm not even sure what the right word is, but there are different these different layers and fields that we interface with um uh to come into matter to become matter uh and there's all these things going on behind the scenes you know behind the unseen realms the pre-manifestation realms um and so what this was telling me was that we broke through um yet another very important layer completely broke through and seriously she was like looking at me uh eye to eye yeah so um the dark matter matrix is what enables a form to exist. And what Sammy explained to me several years ago is that um, it defines what you are, what you are not, you know? So there's like a matrix of what you're not. So um, it defines what you're not so that uh, the light comes through this, let's say matrix or pattern, the light comes through to uh, define what you are in the matter world. So uh, that's what creates the light body first. And then um, it, the light body holds all these codes um, for who we're meant to be in this physical form in this life as this human. So um, it means that the dark matter matrix it, it's what distinguishes you from a tree, a bird, you know, one human to another. So even in the dark matter matrix, you have a unique blueprint. There's another blueprint of who you are in the dark matter realms so that when the light comes through and really light and sound comes, it's transduced, al alchemized, and you come through to be this human in form and that we know. So um, hope that starts, you know, that helps a little bit more. So it distinguishes you from a tree, another bird, a fox, you know, uh, it, it happens in the dark matter matrix. So um, this is from Ascension Glossary. And she, she's talking about um, the eucharistic body. And this is much more complex. So the dark matter template so is the blueprint when, in which the eternal source particle atoms and molecules are built in order to generate the layers of eternal light, okay? So this is actually a type of matter body that is fully emerged with the eternal spirit substance. So I'll let you, um, you know, read that a bit more if you want to uh, look it up. And again, I'll put the link in. Um, so the, uh, the other, important part in here is that um, 
uh, the, the earth is also rebuilding her dark matter body uh, with flickering and glittering opalescent rainbow pearl energies being observed as they are weaving through the layers in a beautiful tapestry of flowing currents. So as the planetary body is able to hold these activated dark matter bodies, it's the same for each of us on the earth to have the direct potential to interact with these same crystal forces. So again, the earth is designed to hold and support this kind of life that we are. Um, and so it's by connecting with the earth and the earth grid because we're literally connected part of the earth grid um, and the flows of energy in that uh, grid system of the earth that is enabling us to, um, to change as well and evolve with the earth as the earth evolves. So um, yeah, this is uh, interesting and exciting uh, information. So this is a, a dragon Ishua. I don't know if somebody, some of you may remember, I put out a blog about Ishua, I don't know, a few, a few weeks ago. And uh, Ishua is like um, accessing the um, beyond the quantum field into these uh, breaths. It's almost like this, this field of just pure, pure breath of source. And um, so uh, we were guided to do some work and, um, you know, start bringing through Ishua through the center of the earth. Now, scientists, geologists, um, they say that the earth core is made up of iron and nickel. So, I mean, those are solid um, elements, right? But if we look, if we think about those elements at the subatomic level, right, because they are made of uh, protons, electrons, and neutrons, as well, then um, we can start to see that these pulses of um, what Sammy was calling the quantum, quantum particles coming in. So issue acts as a field of what we might call pure breath. Um, Sammy called it the quantum field as opposed to the quantum field. So she said, this is like minuscule sound breaths pulsing through. This would be akin to beyond subatomic states. So not really even particles, because we talk about particles, even that has, you know, implying that it has a form, but it's states because it's more like oscillating pulses that are caught in between dark matter states or phases, enabling that pulse to exist as a state or a preform. Um, so if anybody, of you, if any of you watch like that movie, what, what the Bleep, that was very popular several years ago, and there's quantum physics physicists that talk about um, uh, uh, quantum mechanics and subatomic particles, and that when they, as they got deeper and deeper into the atom, I mean, it's almost like there's nothing there. It's just like vapor, you know. There's nothing solid. Um, there's nothing there, uh, and yet we have this illusion of being solid. Um, so when you think of yourself that way that we're made of these pulsing sound pulses and um we're not even solid i mean it's really the hologram is really quite you know amazing to even think about um so the quantum field yeah uh okay i didn't i didn't find the video of, of the of the atom and i mentioned what the bleep um, so why is this relevant? What does it mean for you to be light uh, or particles? And I think when we start to um, mentally, because as humans, we, we have a mental mind and it's important in how we interpret our reality that if we can start to change our perception that way, then we start to get closer to um, changing our density because it's uh, in changing density that um, we really begin to realize that we're uh, particles, waves oscillating all the time uh, that is creating this hologram of being a form. And you know, when we start to fully feel that in our body, 
And I think we're going to, so something's saying to me in the next three to five years, more and more people are going to start to feel this and sense this physically um, that we can actually release a lot of dead light. It's going to be, you know, and that's why we're going through all these healings and cleansings and wanting to purge. Uh, it's because of all these changes that are that are taking place and these access points into the pureness of uh, original creation, you know. So um, as we can start to view ourselves differently, then it helps our bodies to relax into the changes that are also taking place. So hope that makes sense. But anyway, um, I think at a feeling level, I feel like you all, you all understand what I'm seeing. Um, so we talked a little bit about the uh, lunar eclipse in the last uh, blog and the reset of subatomic particles. So last fall, um, I really felt like the proton was coming through and the changes that are happening to the proton, which uh, gives us, proton has mass, I believe, and it's related to density. It's that E equals MC squared that, um, uh, that Einstein talks about. I can't explain it fully right now. Um, but now the neutron uh, went under, underwent a big change. And so um, what, what, why does this matter? Again, so from Samantha, uh, it, that was in the blog, the neutrons is the consciousness of, of balance, of, of wanting to connect to and be in balance with the cosmos. Protons is like a consciousness of presence. And you can kind of get that feeling if it has mass, it's almost like exerting your presence here, you know? So this proton is like facilitates this matter state of feeling like you're here, you know, in this hologram, but like, here I am, uh, I'm here and I'm in this form, I'm in this body, you know, for this whatever period of time. Um, and electrons is like waves or a movement or a dance of particular God source uh, language emanations, which um, a lot of it is, is sound. So you kind of get this feeling of movement or a dance from um, sound that they're all continuously oscillating. They continuously want to be in, in motion and the electron gives us that, um, that sense. So uh, this is all important because we have lived in a 3D time period when matter was treated as being something dead, you know, and I certainly had that belief when I started my awakening and suddenly I could hold a rock and feel its consciousness or I could feel a tree, you know, talking to me. I was like stunned, you know, cause I had that uh, illusion as well that um, matter is dead, you know, that this table is dead. This chair that I'm sitting in is just dead matter, you know, but um, this is saying, so this kind of new awareness about neutrons, protons, and electrons, it's almost like it's being infused with consciousness again. You know, it's bringing back to life um, everything that we took, took for granted. And it's kind of consistent with that idea that if, okay, if God created everything, then what part is God not in? And so why would we treat a rock and the earth as if it's dead, you know, why would we treat the dirt as if uh, it's not alive and that there's no consciousness in it? So this is saying it's bringing everything back to, to life again. And we're gonna be relating to um, the consciousness of all of it in a very uh, different and unique way. And a lot of our ancestors, 30,000 years ago, you know, the Lemurians, um, they kind of had this knowledge, but we're taking that inner awareness. But now this is, this is even something new. This is taking it to another quantum leap, you know, uh, and we're going to be evolving because of these literal changes to uh, these subatomic particles and these changes that's happening in the macrocosm as well. So from the, the very, very tiniest of particles or um, states of fields or whatever you want to call it, everything is being rewritten. And it can only, only 
help us to now evolve to a state that we can't even fathom or imagine right now. So it's, it's pretty exciting, you know, all this stuff that's going on when we can actually move through some of these uh, really intense things that are taking place. But um, this is sort of what's happening. So this is um, some of the new creation technology from the uh, primordial galactic suns that I call it now. Um, this one helps to work with the bio photons that are um, that were being that, that the influx of bio photons. And this is a 12 point star um, from those 12 galactic suns that uh, is going to help stabilize our the high heart or the eighth chakra right there at the thymic thymic level. And it's also doing some things. It also has the capacity to do some things at the um, with our neurology as well with our changing neurology and the 12 cranial nerves that will um, continue to be worked with. So uh, use some of the new tools and this is gonna be, you know, this is part of the basis for the meditation. Somebody else has a comment here. Um, yeah, the Incas had that knowledge. That's right, they had the knowledge. Lots of um, really beautiful insights that the, um, that of the, the Incas, um, the Peruvians, the Mayans, um, the indigenous people, the aboriginals uh, in Australia. So definitely, um, now the Druids are coming up too, now Druids and their ancient knowledge that they had. So uh, a lot of this is in our uh, DNA and our lineage as well. Um, when you talk about the acetonia lines or vertical channels, uh, some of you have done some private sessions with me, you know, we've done this at other times. There are these multidimensional uh, energy lines and these connect with the earth. So there's more than just the Hara line um, that goes down the sun. That's the central vertical channel. We have all these other channels that flow through and it, we're connected to it and we can, we can, con we can um, influence the flow by squeezing these fingers and there's, and it goes out through the corresponding toes on our feet. So what this means is that these connect to the multidimensional earth. So like four is connected to the fourth dimensional, a fourth dimensional channel of energy in the earth. Seven is a seventh dimensional. Um, so this is a 10, which is the, the middle finger of the left hand. Uh, the one is the first dimension and also the root. So as you can see, it flows through the, 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 our chakra system as well. So this flow and this connection is um, important to utilize the, the energy that's um, coming through. So uh, you can read a bit more of these um, when I share the, the, um, the recording. Uh, so I made a correction from last meeting I had forgotten the trigeminal, I had 11. So these are the 12 uh, cranial nerves. And Marianne was referring to, to some of it with, with the hearing and the ears and how sound flows through all our organs and, and body systems. Um, so the meditation again is gonna connect to the earth channels um, as the earth is clearing and going through upgrades. Let me just go through the images really quickly before we start the meditation. So the base platform, again, is gonna be these Dantian centers as well. Everybody in working in their own fractal body chamber to get coherence for what is right for you. These are the new multidimensional energies that are flowing through. And I actually drew this in 2019, but I didn't know what to do with them then. Uh, and again, so they don't flow through the earth like in these straight lines, but we refer to them as the vertical channels. Um, and, and since we're physically connected to the earth grid, these energies flow through our light body and then connect to our bodies via the meridian channels and the chakra system. So we're also gonna clear that interface. So we also have horizontal channels. Um, and uh, let's see, so, I'll have this diagram up again when we're going through each finger to activate um, the axitonial lines or these vertical channels. And the center one 
uh, 11 and 12 is outlines each side of the horror line or the central vertical channel. And Sammy had me put this gold energy and this um, emerald energy to clear those uh, vertical channels. Uh, and these are the 12 channels. So that, and just intend whatever energy color feels right for your body to flow through, to flow through. Um, let's see. So this is the golden, what golden white eagle, and the, that's this is what it means. It, the horizontal channels, the um, uh, that's part of the Earth grid. So we have the vertical that goes up and down, and the horizontal channels that go side to side. And this is what this golden eagle, uh, golden white eagle, is doing. And um, she told me earlier that uh, she's receiving the influx, influx of these bio those bio photons and uh, flowing it through the horizontal channels of the earth to cleanse, cleanse the earth. And the diamond channels would be what we refer to as the diagonal channels. So, you know, when I have been doing like, we clear the vertical, we clear the horizontal, we clear the diagonal, um, this is what we're doing. And the, the dragons uh, are what, um, the, di the diagonal channels are what the dragons actually have opened up or the, the diagonal channels. So just running through this quickly, the images. Oh, this is an energy of protease also as a basis of our meditation that we got from the, the center of the galaxy. And it assists in breaking down inorganic or unnatural proteins in our body. Um, so it's a, again, a divine gift from the galactic core that we recently received. This is a dragon breath that um, works in an in-between, these in-between fields that we can't even, that we don't even know about right now, um, but it has a divine intelligence. It knows what to do, where to connect, to help us connect to these different um, layers of the creation field or different aspects of the cosmos that were fully emerged and engaged with we're, we're part of the dimensionalized system we're in we're embedded in um, the field of creation so it's working at it works at that level so then uh, let's see going back to um, so yeah I'm going to be um, posting those images particularly the the ones with the axitonial lines and the fingers. Um, so you can, you know, do that more often. That is something um, that's good to do uh, on a fairly regular basis, you know, if not every day, you know, you could just, once you get it, you, you know, you can just do it clearly, clear all the vertical channels and go through each one and then clear all the horizontal, clear the diagonal, you know, and uh, come into neutral balance in yourself so thank you for joining me today and thank you for continuing to do your part in your work so see you next month happy integrating <laughs>